What if I told you your mind is not like a diamond? It's more like a mousetrap. Functionalism is a theory in the philosophy of mind that says if we want to understand the fundamental nature of mental states, like thinking, being angry, or seeing hot pink, then it helps to think about the nature of mousetraps. So what is a mousetrap? This is pretty standard, but what about this? Or this? These are very different physical objects, but they're all mousetraps. So is this. Gross, sorry. And this too. Though a double mouse guillotine seems a little uncalled for, if you ask me. Got an afternoon to waste? Try going down the mousetrap rabbit hole on the YouTubes, featuring the walk the plank mousetrap, the rolling log mousetrap, and my favorite, the spinning razor blade windmill of death mousetrap. As you can see, what makes a mousetrap a mousetrap is not what it's made of. What makes a mousetrap a mousetrap is what it does. If it functions as a mousetrap, it is a mousetrap, no matter what it's made of or how it's constructed. Even this could be a mousetrap if it were to function as one. So some things are what they are based on their function, but not everything. Take a diamond, for example. What does a diamond do? It sparkles and shines, draws oohs and ahs from jewelry lovers, but cubic zirconia sparkles and shines and draws oohs and ahs from jewelry lovers just as well. At least, as long as you don't have a nosy expert around. But no matter how much cubic zirconia sparkles and shines or impresses your friends, it's not a diamond because a diamond is not characterized by its function. It's not what it does that matters. It's what it's made of. If it doesn't have a certain molecular structure, it's just not a diamond. Functionalism says that the mind is not like a diamond. It doesn't matter what it's made of. The mind is more like a mousetrap. As long as it functions like a mind, as long as it does mindish stuff, it's a mind. Imagine aliens invade our planet, but they don't have brains. Their heads are full of a gelatinous goo with chemical properties our science doesn't even recognize. They are calculating and planning our destruction. They want to take over the world and intend to do so. These are all mental states. The goo in the alien's heads is doing mindish things. So arguably, they have minds, but they don't have brains. On this view, any kind of identity theory that says the mind equals the brain, or that certain mental states equal certain brain states, is just wrong. If wanting is just a certain kind of brain activity, then these aliens couldn't want to destroy the Earth, because they don't have brains. But obviously they do want to destroy the Earth. That's why they're pointing their laser cannons at us. In philosophy, we call this basic idea multiple realizability. Mental states can be realized in different kinds of stuff, not just brains. Sure, our pain is realized in the firing of neurons, but the alien's pain is realized in the activity of the goo. Just like trapping is realized by a coiled spring here, but realized by a narrow entrance here. Functionalism helps explain multiple realizability. As long as something functions in mindish ways, then what exactly it's made of just doesn't matter. Maybe you can see where this is going. Why couldn't microprocessors realize the functions of a mind? If a machine were to function just like a human being, if it behaved like it had beliefs and desires, and handled inputs and outputs in the same way we do, then why deny it has a mind? Or so says functionalism. In future videos, I hope to talk more about the main challenges to functionalism, like inverted spectrum, philosophical zombies, and the famous Chinese room. But now you're familiar with the broad outlines of functionalism, perhaps the most popular view in the philosophy of mind.